Hi guys, and welcome back to the Guitar Bay, another day in the Bay. I'm Danny. I'm Takis. What are we drinking today, mate? Uh, today we're drinking um, hot chocolate, age episode, and I've got my lucky SpongeBob uh, mug, and some extra noise here, coming from the guitars, of course. It's a noisy place. Cheers, mate. Cheers, pal. <laughs> and yeah, hot chocolate. Today's a bit different, right? We have a guest in the room That's today. Right. We have a guest here. Who is... Uh, a friend of mine and approached me and said he has some gear that uh, would fit onto the guitar bay. So he's going to jump in and uh, surprise you with something. Mate. Yeah, he was waiting right there and he's going to jump in and swap with Danny for a while and tell us what he has for us today. Um, it's a surprise to me. I know it's a guitar. That's all I know. Yes. So he's going to show us the guitar. He I would mean, like to yeah, sell. I've when you told me that you had this guitar i was quite surprised so it's quite a controversial guitar um came out in 2017 and notorious this guitar and not for good reasons but we'll leave it up to you to decide right you want to grab it hmm. yeah let's do it. Chuck, chuck it in yep. okay okay so it was next to me hi man hello mate Nice to, here. nice to meet you finally, <laughs> big fan of the Bay. Okay, yeah. Uh, and yeah, Emil wanted to uh, share something with us. Uh, he's got a guitar, as you can see. I do have a guitar here. So, uh, that guitar, as Danny said, it's really controversial because it came out in 2017. All right. It's never been built before. It's one of a kind. And, I mean, it's a mass product guitar, but like, and you bought it uh, hoping for what, like a great guitar and you're a bit disappointed? What, what's the deal? To be honest, I just really wanted to check it out. Um, uh, I did not have any place to go to to check it out and uh, I just ordered it. Ordered it on the internet, sign and scene. Um, it sounded interesting. It was a budget instrument by a very nice brand. It should be a nice brand. Though. Okay. In these years, that particular brand wasn't doing very well, in my opinion, for sure. Okay, uh, I could start with a few guesses now, but I'm not going to yeah. do that. So, can, can I may I ask how much you paid for it when you bought it? Yeah, I, I bought it for around four fifty or something. Like new? That. I don't new, brand new. Okay, four fifty new. Yeah. All right. Now do you I'm have any curious. guesses? Yeah. You know what it is, right? Yeah. So Danny knows what it is. I have no idea. Okay, let's. All right. Let's see it. Okay. So first thing you see is the. So that's the case. Seen it already. Yeah, the case. And it says Gibson. Yeah. That's not going to be a More Gibson, importantly, it? it says Gibson USA. Yeah. yeah. But it's not going to be a USA made Gibson with 450, right? That would be weird. So I'm expecting Epiphone, uh, maybe? Mm. I don't know. Oh, we don't know. Let us see. Okay. Okay. Let's see. It's light. It is. It it's is pretty light, light guitar. guitar. Yeah. It is a Gibson guitar. It is a Gibson it's guitar. It's a Firebird type. Type guitar. of a guitar, yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen one of these before? <laughs> I have not, no. no. So this is USA made. It is. Look uh, on the back of the neck over there. What does it say? It says made in USA. Yeah, and it has, model. exactly. And it has a serial number and everything. It's USA made Gibson okay. for 450. That was the budget line of Gibson back then. They tried to have a budget line. So they came up with that, like nobody knows what it is, honestly, <laughs> it, it neck dives crazy, it, it's not, it's a really thin guitar, it is a ringer though, because it, the body is very thin, and you have the maple neck with the rosewood fingerboard, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it does ring, so but it doesn't sound anything like Gibson, so, okay. yeah. You, but you check it out. What can you tell yes, me about it, like body, um, wood, uh, types of pickups? I, I see two humbuckers. Yeah, more. I, I, you, I think you'll hear the difference, but these are like more like they do, like, honestly, they sound like single coils. Okay. Yeah, that's what I don't like. So about they're low output yeah. humbuckers. Yeah, but it, I don't know how low Split? they have no. to be to sound like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a very interesting guitar. What's the name of the model? What is it? It is a Fireboard Zero. Firebird Zero. Exactly. And this series came out in 2017. Exactly. No one knows about it. You suggested that it's not very popular. Uh, no, because a bunch of people bought it and said, oh, that sucks. So <laughs> okay. Nobody has bought it. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, but I don't know. I don't. Know. It's not my cup of tea. I want to sell it, and I I just decided like before I sell it, I I'll just bring it up here so you guys Thank can you check it out. Thank you very much, sir. That's and, really nice. And you, I want. I really, I'm really interested in your opinion, guys. Okay, that, for sure. Okay, it looks like yeah. a 12 inch radius neck. Yeah, pretty. The neck yeah. doesn't feel bad. No, it doesn't. It is neck diving, as you said. Like crazy. Yeah. If you put it on a strap. You see, like I can feel it already. That it's, yeah. it's, it's like neck, it's headstock. Yeah, yeah. it is. And but that happens with two thousand euro okay. Gibsons. So uh, yeah, um, I know. Yeah, but still, uh, it's it's hard instrument to play. Okay. Yeah. Let's find out. And the fret for job me, seems for me, to I'm be personally. the fret job seems to be okay. No yeah. sharp edges or anything. Okay, the nut is plastic, but decent. Yeah. Okay, maybe the USA 450. That's a that's a weird thing to begin with, you know. That's yeah, it is. I had no idea about the, these guitars, by the way. So yeah, let's plug it in. Firebird Zero. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, I'm back in the chair, and um, yeah, this guitar is super notorious for being absolutely pants. And I could actually see from where you're sitting how bad the finish is. It looks like it's been painted with a roller or something. <laughs> and from what I watched in videos, people, Gibson were going down a crazy direction at the time where everything just wasn't working. They were doing the whole automatic tuners and everything. And supposedly this guitar was pretty much all the spare parts that they had chucked on a piece of wood with Gibson USA stamp on it. Probably very quickly produced. And do you mind if I... Oh, it feels a... like plywood. It feels like a gaffist, like the court uh, Xenox we had on the second episode. So it's not a tone wood. Mm. There's no resonance coming from the wood at all. It could be like a... But it uh, doesn't... It, it looks like a beginner's guitar. Like a chest of drawers. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not guitar. Like that uh, finish... Wood. We'll get some close-ups of it. But that finish on the neck, the tuners, no brand tuners. No. The stamp on the back looks... I mean, I'm... I don't want to go too hard on it because... Let's see how it sounds through a, a valve amp, you know? Yeah. So, Dan is right. I mean, this finish is really poor for a guitar that has the name Gibson mm. on it, too. Uh, but this pickguard situation here, this white um, thing, kind of saves it and makes it presentable. Uh, the Firebird shape is always nice, I think. It is. And you know what? There's a slash model of uh, Firebird, and from far enough away, you could come close enough, and of that line, the yeah. Gibson cheap. No, the, no, there's a there's an expensive model, okay. and Slash has a black Thunderbird style one guitar. Thunderbird or Firebird? <laughs> a Firebird, is it? <laughs> I think so. And um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a strange one. It, it is completely unknown to me. That was uh, a completely new thing for me. So um, yeah, it's plugged in, as you can see. It's in the Laney. Uh, that we know and love uh, with the LC, uh, with the, S, the LC50, Laney LC50 with an SM57 in front um, and the Royal Blue Overdrive, a tiny bit of reverb coming from the amp and uh, the drive is at 11 o'clock, between 10 and 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. which is my usual setting, especially with the Telecaster and the single coils. This is a wonderful edge of breakup sound. So, bridge pickup. There's no split coil, is there? No. No. Okay. Coil split. Split coil, coil split. Words are hard. So. <laughs> it's not bad. It's almost Telecaster. Territory with a bit more Spitey. bass, a bit more mm -hmm. meat, which you would expect from um, a humbucker. Emil mentioned that they're more like single coils, right? Mm. Which I don't mind at all, actually. <laughs>
that easy to play here? Yeah, and I think you said that you had a, you've done a fair bit of playing with the action to try and get it down to... I believe me, guys, I tried really hard. Yeah. Okay. It didn't work out. It's just... I mean, I'm, I'm not disliking it. Um, it doesn't sound bad In terms sure. of looks, it's not uh, the best thing around, definitely. What I wanted to say, actually, was that the guitars on the show, generally, that we've had so far, we've had from 100 euros all the way up to, what, three, 400? Uh, the prices we paid in order to purchase these guitars, yeah. yes, uh, they retail for, I think the PRS in the first episode, uh, the SE uh, Indonesian made, the retail price is 560, 570, and that's the most expensive yeah. instrument, instrument we've had on the show, yeah. And, I mean, from, from looks-wise and from quality of build, you know, craftsman, craftsmanship, I would say we've, we've been very spoiled. The PRS, yeah. SE, and the vintage for for one as well, was just an absolute banger of a guitar for very little money. We've talked about it in almost every episode, how amazing it is that uh, these guitars now, even though they cost a couple of hundreds, uh, they have amazing fretwork. Um, they seem to be decent pieces of wood. Uh, and we've, um, yeah, we've said how squires are a completely different universe now than what they used to be 20 years ago. In, um, Asian made guitars are not uh, the bad, cheap, horrible deal that they used to be 20 years mm. ago. So. Yeah, uh, budget guitar guitars have come a long way uh, in the last couple of decades. But Gibbs, that's a weird yeah. animal. Yeah, Gibson, yeah. for that money, uh, completely unknown to me. That's, I'm learning about this today for the first time. But I like what I hear, so still bridge, uh, Royal Blue. <laughs> by the pickups um, just need to get used to it it's a bit chunky and not so I think the frets are too jumbo for me they're quite tall mm -hmm. um, but let me okay that was the royal blue you just heard I'm gonna go tube screamer because everybody has a tube screamer thank you Danny take the royal blue off tube screamer on sort of sitting at um, yeah do about a yes yeah, like a 35 percent yeah. yeah maybe less than noon drive mm -hmm. Back to the bridge and see what happens. <laughs> Tube Screamer Tunnel Town. Mm. Uh, could you do me a favor? Just, um, um, yeah, just give me a clean signal. Just um, disengage the Tube Screamer. So that's the, the clean pickup sound, just in the laney. <laughs> Both pickups. You can't get any spank out. You have to really try. It's it's quite mm. dark, but it's a Gibson guitar. If you want spank, get a Telecaster. And neck. with a tube screamer please. Thank you. A tiny bit of level up. Thank you sir. Mid. Ok, 
okay. I like the pickups. I would have to get used to this. It's more chunky, maybe for, for, for rhythm play. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. I'm going to do some um, Mud Honey, the, the boost channel. That's the one, just to hear some high gain. <laughs> Slayer, don't sue me. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's nice. That's really sounded good today, man. Yeah, I do not dislike at all the way it sounds. Uh, I do not dislike the headstock at all or the shape. The finish is a thing. Mm -hmm. It looks cheap. It looks like a piece of furniture. It, it kind um, of. It, I don't know why it reminds you of the court in some ways. And what was the court? One hundred and ninety euros or so. Uh, no, money. less. One hundred and twenty. You know, it's that flat black finish, dot inlays. From where I'm looking, fretboard looks okay. Doesn't sound like anything. It's kind of in its own little world of... I paid 120 thing. for the court. I think they retailed new about 250 back in the mid-2000s uh, when they were released. And it reminds me of that court, yeah, too. It's the how dead the wood is, basically. Mm. It's not... Um, it doesn't carry any tone at all. Everything comes from the pickups. Um, Can I have a go? I don't like it. <laughs> just doesn't feel like a Gibson, so I wouldn't buy it. It's just, I mean, it's. It doesn't, what is it, it doesn't what is it you sound don't like bad. About it? Can you be a bit more? It just feels like a cheap. It just feels like a cheap guitar. Like the fret, it just reminds me of them them starter guitars. I mean, it doesn't sound bad by any means, but it sounds like its own little thing. And is it the neck? Is it the surface on the neck? Is it how big the frets are? Is it the fretboard being sticky or not? I don't know. Not inviting. You know, you know when you just click with a guitar or you don't. I think that might just be the case here. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't sound bad at all. But I don't know. When you buy a Gibson, you want it to sound like a Gibson. I would rather buy an Epiphone that felt like, you know, some of the Epiphones we we had there. Well, very often the that's SG the whole point of Epiphone. I mean, yeah. Epiphone is to Gibson what Squire is to Fender, right? So it's. Mm. Um, the cheap alternative, Asian made, and it aims for the Gibson feel and sound. The thing is, I don't dislike the guitar. I just think the 450 price point is mainly because of the Gibson thing on the headstock. And that's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's, it doesn't feel... I mean, for I would put this at like a 299 New. Yeah. But you can't when it's made in the USA, can you? And uh, I don't know. Let's give it some more tones. How much are you hoping to get Emil out of it? I, I don't know. Just, I just won't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really that bad? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just don't like that guitar for sure. It's, okay. not, it's not my instrument.
tend to to be going into the Gary Moore Avenue lately a lot, which is uh, the nice. Gaza Mooskies. Yeah, Gaza Mooskies. <laughs> it comes with age, I think. The blues. I felt okay. actually going when I was going down the higher frets there. Yeah. Yeah, no. as in no. Yeah, yeah, as in no. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't want to bash this thing. It's not my guitar. But the I mean, owner I of the guitar has bashed it already quite openly. So <laughs> go ahead. I really don't care. Bash away. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we should wrap it up and um, first of all, huge thanks for bringing it in, mate. Thank you, like, Emil. That's really nice. Uh, you guys are very welcome. And uh, I guess in the future we'll be open to help people get rid of guitars or, and I think there's, um, that's kind of the philosophy for us on the show is that, you know, people buy and sell guitars all the time, but we're just documenting it. Yeah. We're just, I've been doing this for, for years, buying guitars, fixing them up, breaking guitars you know, <laughs> and selling them on. That's, and that's, what they, that's what they're for. Yeah, so this this thing will go up on eBay. And you said you wanted 350 for it? Yes. So we'll put a buy it now price and um, we'll stick an advert down below. It was 450 retail and you bought it when? No, it was in 2017. Okay. And it's barely been played. One can see that, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. It looks new. It is in, is in great condition for... Uh, uh, not great guitar. <laughs> you can see the bridge is a bit wonky as well. And it, like you said, you tried your best to set it up and you're good with stuff like that, I know for sure. I still um, have to say, the pickups were really pleasant to my ears. Yeah, um, then I'm trying to convince myself, does the Laney just make everything sound good? <laughs> with well, a Royal Blue overdrive? I mean, yes, there's a certain element of truth in that. But you see that you test the pickup, how it cleans up. Uh, whether the guitar allows that, you know, the electrics of uh, the electronics of the guitar, whether they allow uh, with a volume knob to clean up. Mm. And that was okay, I think. That wasn't bad. As with uh, the Hartley Bentons, for example. You, you don't really get that with a Hartley Benton guitar. Yeah. At least with the ones we've tried mm. here. Um, I mean, I guess you could upgrade it if you wanted. Um, but but at if, the you, end if, of the day if your problems, if, you, if, you're, if you're not happy with the whole neck fret situation, mm. then there's not much to upgrade, is there? Yeah. That's the thing, you know, I just sold the Harley Benton two days ago. The Telecaster. Yeah, and I had a little play of that before it left, and what a fantastic guitar it was for the price. And um, that was something that had a solid piece of wood, really nice piece of wood, really True. nice neck. True. And all the possibility in the world to stick in Fender Custom Shop pickups, and you would still be at less price than this. And for me, yeah. this is not a True. solid guitar. This is not something that you know Fair that enough. feels solid enough bashing for today we are trying to sell it after i mean not yeah. trying to sell it i'm sure someone um, will take it you know it's a it's a gibson usa and if it doesn't <laughs> sell it's not the end of the world either right sure. um but yeah but uh, i guess we are trying to sell it or we we the things that we have we sell but the main point of the whole thing here is to be honest and um, I think this episode has been a testament to, to, to that, mm. to our willingness to be honest and uh, say what we think truly about. Because we don't get any any freebies, we don't get any guitar sent from from companies or from manufacturers or from music stores. Uh, and recently, I saw a video uh, that it's very likely it's something I've been um, you know wondering myself about uh, for a long time now whether those reviews receive really fine specimens of guitars that do not really reflect what the average factory guitar mm, might be. Mm. So you get a warped idea of what the guitar is like when you see a YouTube video, a review. Um, so we don't do any of that here. We just review yeah. what we get on our hands. Um, we get it from their second hand, so they might have already yeah. been butchered, as I say. Butchered, and we're selling the very item you see, not just the, the model. You know, yeah. that's, this, that's the one. Uh, and I've got friends from work who would like to to give me pedals that they would like to. Uh, yeah, we got a backlog of stuff yeah, yeah, that we need are, rid of. Who are interested locally and, and not only, uh, who would like to give us stuff for the show, which we are uh, hugely grateful for, by the way. And I think this is the right time to to wrap up. Yeah. Okay. Um, today's an album with with H. Today is H. That's right. So you go first. I always the, go I'm first. Gonna leave the, the hiss in the background, I don't mind. I'll go first, correct, because you always go first yourself. Um, I'm going to go uh, Harvest, Neil Young. Um, maybe it comes with age, as I mentioned, with the, the Gary Moore stuff, but I've, um, I've listened to that album so much. Heart of Gold, 
um, old man, a man needs a maid, out on the weekend, perhaps the most, the, the best selling album by Neil Young, just a yellow cover, Harvest, um, the word Harvest on the cover, um, yeah, that's my album and I really, I have a, again, like with every album in that um, part of the show, I have a very personal relationship to it. Yeah, my dad loves Neil Young as well. So Neil Young is my favorite out of those, you know, um, um, Southern United States kind of style um, uh, singer songwriter, the mm. Bob Dylan's and the Neil mm. Young. Uh, Neil Young stands out for me because mm. um, he sa he seems to be the more mus the most musical uh, to my ears. Yeah, I never liked Bob Dylan. That's the thing. But me that's, neither. Um, me neither. Yeah, actually. good, yeah. good, good to know. Yeah, that's my album, Harvest. Nice. What about you? Mine's is uh, is typical for me. Probably very predictable, and I'm sure you guys will, and I hope everybody has heard the album, this hybrid theory from Linkin Park. It's got to be, it, like I said, uh, Hot Dog, The Chocolate Starfish, uh, Lim uh, Limp Biscuit was one of my favourite albums, but Linkin Park hybrid theory, it, they just re-released it um, with some of the original you know tracks and stuff. It's so well and produced anyway. I mean, Linkin Park was very well produced from from day one. Mm. And to God, come on! Is it the first one? Hybrid Theory, like one step closer. One step numb. closer, yeah. Okay. Uh, not numb. In the end. Okay. Paper cut. Okay. Um, but God, the riffs and they, you know, they did some of the stuff with Jay Z as well, and I, mm. I love that. Like uh, points of authority and. With you, with you, just absolute, and it's what an amazing singer, and Mike Shinoda, it's just a a cool dude as well. I, I I always say I would like to go for a beer with Mike Shinoda because he seems like a really cool guy. Always smiling. Yeah, and he's super humble, and um, seems to be yeah. Yeah, and I think still, and I watched a recent thing where he was, you know, he does his Twitch streaming and stuff like that, and people were saying, make a hybrid theory style song and he just came up with it on the spot and it was just hybrid theory that era and he said that's easy for him you know that stuff comes to him just naturally absolutely love Linkin Park have you and got a favorite album sorry Go ahead. yeah I was just gonna say devastated that I never got to see them live and um, that's okay. the one band that I missed out on and obviously with Chester passing it's uh, still thing that's extremely sad but you know I have come to respect as odd as it sounds, Linkin Park even more after Chester's passing because mm. I was never a huge fan of them, never disliked them, but never a huge fan. But I ended up watching lots of videos about him, with him, talking about about depression. About yeah. um, so I've gained a new respect, a new angle mm. for uh, for the guy and, and the band, generally speaking. Is Hybrid Theory for you an album as well? Do you like Linkin Park? I do, I do like Linkin Park. Do you like more heavy music, like um, metal or... Um, um, I'm I'm all around uh, like I, I listen to everything basically everything yeah. and I, I do like very heavy stuff like like mild stuff and then I do like blues and, and jazz even okay so, yeah. welcome to the club yeah we've yeah, really enjoyed much. we've enjoyed having you mate and uh, you. we hope everyone's enjoyed this episode and yeah it's been a bit different today with this one a bit out of the box and uh, thanks as always for the likes the comments subscribes and. Yeah, we're having great fun. That's right. Don't Thanks reject again. me. I'm not going to reject you this time. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Ciao.